So during my youthful days, there was a channel that I really liked to watch often. It was Cartoon Network, and it had a lot of great shows on it from, you know, Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls, Cow and Chicken, you name it, Johnny Bravo. But then there was one show that came out of nowhere that seemed to go in a completely different direction and wanted to take itself very seriously, and it ended up becoming my favorite show of the time. And that was none other than Gennady Tartakovsky's, I, I'm pretty sure I butchered his name, Samurai Jack. I'm not kidding. When Samurai Jack was first announced and we got to see those first few episodes put together as a movie, it was plain and simply the sh it certainly was a different time in Cartoon Network history, if nothing else. Samurai Jack from its inception was a passion project from all those who worked on it. Inspired by Asian cultures and artistic styles, they clearly wanted to make something special here. Despite, you know, having to stay true to the Cartoon Network formula of kids entertainment. At the time, this was right up my alley because aside from cartoons, I was watching movies like Shogun Assassin, which to this day I still love and highly recommend. Hell, Lone Wolf and Cub even made a cameo appearance on the show. So I'm definitely sure there was some inspiration. All right, so I know this video is mostly gonna be covering the new Samurai Jack video game Battle Through Time, but I feel that I sadly would be doing this game and Samurai Jack as a whole a major disservice if I didn't cover and talk about the lore at least a little prior to this game and why it's relevant to this Samurai Jack game even existing and to give any newcomers a heads up on what the heck this is all even about. I mean, we've had Samurai Jack video games before. I mean, we've had this and this, but we never had anything quite like this, and this seemed to be something different. This wasn't just a Samurai Jack video game for the sake of just having a Samurai Jack video game. This one seemed like it was made with purpose. It's true, Samurai Jack did in his heyday in the sixth generation of gaming had his fair share of outings from the Game Boy Advance games, web browser games, and the Shadows of a Coup video game for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube. Which, at the time, I'm sure in some ways may have been a decent game, but honestly, I've never really played any of them. I do own Shadow of a Coup, so maybe if there's enough interest, I'll give this one a gloss over sometime. Eh, but I'll leave that for you guys to decide. Samurai Jack the TV Show, when it originally aired, combined several of its first episodes to be premiered as a TV movie on Cartoon Network. And hot damn, it made a hell of a first impression. So yes, we are definitely gonna go all in and talk about Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. So I wanna get this out of the way. Since the game is still fairly new, spoilers are definitely gonna be a big talk about the entire series as a whole, from spoilers about season five, which was the climactic finale of the entire show, and how that relates to the video game and its plot. So just letting you know right now, guys, massive spoilers are coming. So if you guys haven't played the game yet or watched the show yet and you wanna you feel like you could check it out, then now is the perfect time to bail. Otherwise, we're just going all in, guys. To summarize, this demon lord named Aku once ravaged the earth, destroying everything in his wake. Why? He's an asshole. A warrior was granted a magic katana sword from the gods to seal away this demon, which he does. Eventually, peace ruled again, and the story of those events were being passed on to the next generation. Aku eventually breaks free from the seal, and, well, as he puts it, once again, I am free to smite the world as I did in days long past. True to his word, Aku begins his evil plans and again destroys the land, capturing the man who defeated him years prior. However, a plan was set into motion that should Aku return, the warrior's son would be saved and sent across the world to train under the best teachers from all different cultures. This kid would become Samurai Jack. Arguably 20 years later, after having trained his ass off from the day he left home, Jack would finally receive the Holy Master Sword. Okay, that's not really what it's called, it's just Jack's sword. Anyway, he would set out on his quest to reclaim his own land and kill Aku once and for all. And holy shit, he nearly does. And in record time. From the moment he gets the sword, he goes back to his land, kills every single one of Aku's minions, saves the general public, including his now-aged father, travels to Aku's lair, threatens him to his face, telling him he ain't shit, and in less than two minutes flat, he kicks his ass. As soon as Jack's about to deal the killing blow, this is where the true plot of the show kicks in. From this point on, where Jack would fall into the distant future where Aku reigns and his evil is law. Soon after, Jack would meet the locals where he would be given his iconic name. And as the theme song suggests, 
Jack would spend the remainder of the show going through episodes meeting new people, stopping Aku's evil forces, and trying desperately to find a way back to the past to finish what he started. And for four straight seasons, this is how Jack's adventures would go. Jack himself was mostly a static character that didn't ever change much. The beginning of an episode was usually the same way he ended one, continuing his journey alone to find a way back home. But over the course of the show, he would make some allies, gain new abilities, and, well, <laughs> be an overall pain in Aku's ass. But unfortunately, after four seasons, Samurai Jack, the TV show, was canceled and never given a concluding arc. For years, for years, this would bother fans, including myself, and finally, over a decade of just nothing, Tartakovsky made it known that Samurai Jack was coming back for one final season in 2017. But with a twist. The show was now being hosted by Adult Swim, not Cartoon Network, which meant that all of the restraints from the original show were now lifted. The original show was plenty violent in its own way, but to avoid any graphical content, all of Jack's enemies were mostly robotic, so that when he killed them, it wasn't seen as graphic. This was no longer the case, friends. If some of you are wondering what the video game Samurai Jack Battle Through Time has to do with any of this, well, bear with me, because all of it is coming to a head. When season five aired, Jack explains to the audience that it's been 50 years since he's arrived in the future, and time has had no effect on him. He's remained the same age throughout, and despite his best efforts, he could not for the life of him find a way back home to the past. Since then, Jack and Aku have both fallen into some deep depression. Jack because he lost his way and his sword declaring himself a failure. And Aku because he himself is afraid of Jack and knowing that he's out there, never aging, and unable to beat him, Aku mostly has just kept to himself. Meanwhile, an all-female cult leader that worships Aku made a deal with the devil himself and gave birth to seven daughters. Seven children? From birth, these girls would be ruthlessly raised and trained as assassins for one purpose. Well, yes, but I'm seven! In some of the best episodes of the show, these girls become ready and mercilessly hunt down Jack in a very thrilling and nail-biting game of cat and mouse that nearly results in Jack's death. And for the first time in Jack's career, he has taken a life. It bothers him at first, but he comes to accept that some people have to live with the consequences of their actions. One by one, Jack kills the daughters, all except for one, Ashi. Ashi herself was considered the most distracted of the daughters, and while she is just as determined at first, events transpire that force her to work with Jack, where he not only saves her life, but tries to teach her that Aku is not the loving master she's been raised to think he is. It takes a while, but after being separated from Jack, she goes on her own journey of self-discovery and sees the world for herself and learns that all that Jack said was indeed true. Ashi grows as a character and becomes very likable over the course of 10 episodes. She abandons her original identity and even helps Jack gain back his hope and determination. After Jack and Ashi recover Jack's sword, they work together for a while and find they have romantic feelings for one another. Yes, it's a little Disney with the three-day romance thing, but, eh, you know, given Jack's had probably around 70 years at this point of no companionship, I think most let it slide. Jack and Ashi continue to work together until Aku gets word from one of his bounty hunters that Jack lost his sword. Bad news for Aku, because he got the memo far too late. Aku was about to leave, but soon realizes that Jack's new girlfriend happens to be Aku's daughter by blood. Try as she might to resist, Aku uses his power to take control of Ashi and uses their love against Jack in order to subdue him. In the finale, Aku's captured Jack and plans to kill him live in front of the world. At this moment, every single one of Jack's friends that he made throughout the show appear in a final showdown to help save Jack and put an end to Aku. Sadly, for most, it doesn't go well, but Ashi does eventually break free of Aku's hold and fights back. It's then revealed that Ashi has Aku's powers. Therefore, she makes a quick attempt to grab the sword and return Samurai Jack, along with herself, back to Jack's own timeline. And it works! They show up shortly after Aku sends original Jack to the future, and just like that, Jack gets the jump on Aku and finally succeeds in killing him once and for all. It is done. I admit, this is a bit of a gross oversimplification of Jack's journey, but that is more or less what happens. Okay guys, this is where the controversy comes into play. While fans were no doubt pleased that we did finally get a concluding story for Samurai Jack, fans couldn't help but feel wanting, and as if the 10 episodes felt a little rushed. There was a lot to tell, and a lot that happened pretty fast in those 10 episodes, and when it came to the final episode, 
I guess we were all expecting a big grand finale, and while we sorta got one, it also felt like it truly didn't satisfy us. The final battle between Jack and Aku is so fast and anticlimactic, and not all the fan-favorite characters got to make an appearance to have their final send-off. What's more, when Jack and Ashi return to Jack's time, they opt to get married and invite everyone. It seems like it's gonna be a happy ending. But then out of nowhere, Ashi falls down during the ceremony and informs Jack that without a coup, she would never have existed, and thusly, just fades away out of existence, leaving Jack in mourning, yet hopeful, of a now unwritten future. Although he did save the world, for him, the price was high. Fans, needless to say, were not happy with this ending, and the lack of a real climax left a bittersweet taste in most people's mouths. Yes, I realize what I just said. Tartakovsky more or less understood why people may have been disappointed to a degree, and he did agree and wish that he had more time to flesh out the finale, but he was still happy with the overall result. Whether he responded or not, though, it still didn't change the fact that fans felt like Samurai Jack deserved a better ending. But as far as we knew, the tale was done. Fast forward a couple years later, and out of the blue, I suddenly started seeing trailers for this brand new game, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. This came completely out of nowhere, and I really didn't know what to make of it at first. Uh, don't get me wrong, I was very welcoming to the idea of getting a new game based on Samurai Jack, and with a story that was finally concluded, it would be nice to have a game that allowed you to at least play through the bulk of Jack's story for the first time, but still, I was a little cautious because the thing about games based on cartoon brands is, well, from my experience, they're not made to be long-lasting as much as they are just something for kids. But thankfully, that mentality did not last long as it was made very clear that the game in terms of combat looked to be inspired by some of the more well-known games within its genre, such as Devil May Cry or, hell, even Metal Gear Rising. No, I didn't expect the game to hold a candle to those games, but by watching the gameplay trailers and hearing that you could switch between styles and weapons and deal a growing chain of combos while having to reflex block and dodge enemy attacks, it really did feel like the people who were in charge of this game felt like they actually gave a damn. So they definitely had my attention. When Samurai Jack Battle Through Time was nearing its release date, it was pretty clear that it was a budgeted title and didn't cost the full price. For this, and probably some weird reason, this did cause some people to preemptively dislike the game, claiming that its graphics were poor and on par with the PlayStation 2 days. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry, what? Uh, first of all, it's 2020. I can't believe that I'm having to say this in 2020. But just because your game has the best graphics in the world doesn't mean it's good. And secondly, I really have gotten tired of developers trying their damnedest to be over-realistic in their video games. Does it look nice? Sure. But personally, I love visuals that are far more creative and colorful instead of uber-realistic. That's why I love open-world games like Breath of the Wild, but can't really get that same feeling when playing a game like Skyrim. To me, it's all about the artistry and creativity, but that's an entirely different video I could make altogether. And lastly, really? On par with the PlayStation 2? You are honestly saying that this looks like this? Yeah, it's comments like these that make me question why we allow people to be entitled to their own opinions when it's very clear that they are wrong. I admit, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time's visuals aren't pushing the system to its limits, granted. But you know what? Given that it's a budgeted title, I am legit shocked at how this game looks as good as it does. Because artistically, the game accomplishes what it set out to do and captures the look of the show absolutely perfectly. The biggest question of all that I had about this game was, when the hell does it take place? I definitely recognized some of the enemies Jack fights in the trailer, and based on that, I knew something was up with the continuity. Well, as soon as I started the game, it all started to make perfect sense. Ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with a big, fat series finale retcon. The moment you begin the game, the moment you press that start button, the story kicks off playing clips from the final episode where Ashi was under Aku's control. Just like before, she breaks free from him, and then she and Jack use their time portal to go back to Jack's past. This is where the game kicks in. The moment Jack and Ashi are about to achieve their goal, Aku reaches through the time portal and forces them apart, leaving Ashi to float adrift in time, while Jack lands back to the near start of his journey when his adventure first began. While traveling down memory lane and meeting some old friends, Jack discovers that Aku is using medallions to not only sabotage Jack's time travel, but also using them to take possession of some of his allies. 
Jack discovers that whenever he destroys the Aku medallions, he warps to a different point in time, yet further than where he was, but also strengthening his connection with Ashi, as she is still floating adrift trying to reach him. Wait. With each jump in time, Jack revisits some old friends as well as old enemies, some of which are aware of the time-traveling mishaps and either help Jack, such as the Scotsman and his daughters, Rothschild, and the Samurai, or enemies like the Imakandi, Damongo, who will show up at regular intervals, and Scaramouche, a fan favorite of the final season. That's 50 credits, bud. Trust me, babe, I'm good for it. Whoa, what a freak. Look like a talking penis. The gameplay for Samurai Jack is as I expected given the genre. Jack's got his regular and heavy attack combos with the corresponding buttons, and you can mix them up to deal some extensive combo chains and even break into air combos, which I personally love doing. Jack's arsenal starts off pretty small with only his trusty sword, which, hey, in my opinion, is all you really need. But as you travel, you can find and steal weapons off of enemies you encounter, and you can repair and upgrade them. I never found myself in much of a position to need using them outside of collecting footage for this review, but the wide variety of weapons you can obtain do allow you to switch things up, and I can appreciate that. Don't feel like using the sword? Well, you can go all fisticuffs on enemies with a new set of combos dealing in only hand-to-hand -hand combat. Want to go heavy? Well, you've got giant axes and mallets, which are slow, yes, but heavy hitters. How about wielding a bow staff? Yep, they got you covered here too. And you can switch out all of these weapons in real time on the fly as well, which I think is great because it keeps the pace of combat going and it doesn't break your immersion. The combos start simple, but as you defeat more enemies, Jack will gain experience points. Yes, this game does have RPG elements and an ability tree. You know how this works. With more EXP you gain, you can spend the points to upgrade specific abilities that Jack can have from increased damage to more combos with specific weaponry, increased health, and so on, yada yada. While roaming through stages, you'll come across Samurai, whose only service is to provide you with items, from healing items like food, status buffs, ranged weaponry, and other weapons down the line. You can even purchase some equipable status buffs, which can increase your attack and defense for good measure on top of the upgrades I just mentioned. Melee weaponry isn't the only thing at Jack's disposal, because as quickly as you come across regular weapons, Jack can also find treasure chests which hold a plethora of items from the latter, which you've seen, and also weapons like throwing stars, bows and arrows, and machine guns, which sadly don't last long and are pitiful with how little ammo you get for them. I can't say the ranged weaponry is all that useful because the melee weapons you have on hand are more than sufficient to do the job, but there are some occasional enemies that will be out of reach and try to snipe at Jack from a distance, so if anything, these weapons are useful for firing back at them. As for Jack's combat abilities, he can use his melee weapons just fine and the combos are always fun to dish out. But I'm sure, like in many games similar to this one, you will find that one combo that works well and stick to it like glue. This can create a little monotony, but thankfully not all enemies can be dealt with the same way, so you will at times be forced to change your approach, which I can appreciate from a gameplay standpoint. Defending yourself is equally important. While enemies at first don't seem to pose too much of a threat, the further in the game you go, the bounty hunters and variety of enemies you will face start to hit harder and come in greater numbers. Luckily, Jack's got some dodge rolling mechanics, which I think work pretty damn well, but if you are quick with your timing, you can also block and parry enemies attacks similar to Dante's Royal Guard ability from the Devil May Cry series, or even the dodge rolling from Bayonetta. Jack even has a grabbing move where he can perform a takedown on an enemy and steal the weapon they have. All of the weapons you find and steal all have durability problems and will break after too much use because that's just how weaponry works nowadays. But as I mentioned, you will run into samurai pretty often, which you can either buy more or just repair the ones that you have, so it's never really an issue. Again, that's if you decide to use them at all. The only weapon that you will have that doesn't break at all is Jack's trusty sword, which honestly is how it should be. Something I wish The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild would have did with the Master Sword, but hey, you live and learn. The more damage Jack takes during combat, the more of his clothes will begin to rip off. An idea that I've seen before in other games, one specifically we really don't want to talk about. But honestly, for Jack, it works. Over the course of the television show, we've seen him battered and beaten, so it's actually a nice touch to the detail to see the struggle he goes through be reflected on the damage that he takes. Should you take too much damage, Jack does have a go for broke limit break where he'll yell like a banshee and wreck everything in the room. This is an ability I specifically like to save for those moments when I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed or when I feel like I can kill a boss with it. Speaking of which, the boss battles are an interesting breed. 
Sadly, while they do have a little challenge here and there, I do feel that in terms of strategy and challenge, they are slacking a bit. You really aren't going to see anything special or be forced to do much that you weren't already doing on regular enemies, but I would be lying if I said that they don't throw a few surprises at you. In all honesty, if you come into these fights at all prepared, you are probably going to defeat them on your first try. A little disappointing, but, you know, given the circumstances, I wasn't expecting the same kind of difficulty or AI from the AAA games. Again, while Samurai Jack's gameplay may be on the simpler side given what it is, I truly do feel the game's developers took some notes on what worked in other games from the same genre and tried to apply what they could, and it shows. Given the time frame from when this game began development to the time that it came out, I am impressed at how good the game actually is. The level layouts are pretty linear with little pockets of exploration, and if you do decide to explore, you'll often come across these floating pendants which you can destroy. At first it doesn't seem like they do anything, but trust me, we'll get to them. As you travel from segment to segment, if you are a fan of the show, you will see some very familiar places and really creative visuals, and I really enjoy it. Occasionally, you may have to search an area for ways to progress onward to the next, but don't worry, there's no brain-busting puzzles here. As you get near the finale of the game, Jack will have to relive the final season again, including having to take on the Daughters of Aku. This, for me, was a really awesome experience, because while the circumstances are different this time, being able to experience the fights Jack had to go through and within the same terrain was a fanservice moment that I was thrilled to play. Actually, this is the part of the game where the challenge really starts to show itself. So if you are a veteran hack and slash player, this is where you are going to want to bring your skills because these girls like in the show are relentless. Hell, the Imakandi weren't a joke either. I'd say once you hit that halfway mark in the game, the difficulty definitely takes a curve. I won't say it's a spike, mind you, but it will be noticeably harder. Did I say that one moment before was fan service? Oh, okay, let me try that again. This whole game is fan service. And believe me, it's all about to come to a head. In the finale, Jack and his friends once again finally find their way through the portals and make it to Aku, where, as far as Samurai Jack lore is concerned, we finally get the grand epic battle that I've been wanting. Granted, I'm the one that's directly involved in making it happen. It's still much better than the fast and short-lived one that we got in the actual show. After a fiery battle with Aku, Jack finally defeats him in the future and makes his way back to Ashi through the time portal where, just like in the show, Jack and Ashi appear in the past to defeat Aku once and for all. And this is where the game and story technically ends. However, do you remember those medallions I talked about earlier that you can find hidden all over the place in the game? Well, if you manage to find and destroy all of them, you actually get an extension on the ending. Holy shit! They changed the ending?! Not only do we get the climactic final battle that I wanted from Season 5, but we also get to retcon the show's ending as well, allowing Ashi and Jack to have their happily ever after?! This blew my goddamn mind when I first saw it. Just wow. If nothing else, it really made me wonder just how the hell this all happened. After doing a little digging, I found an interview with the man himself explaining how this game came to be. Adult Swim one day contacted Gendy explaining that they are working on a Samurai Jack video game and they, they wanted him to be involved. At first, Tartakovsky wanted nothing to do with it. He knew how the business went with these types of cash grab games and from his own words, he thought, well, if they were just going to crap one out, he wanted nothing to do with it. But the heads at Adult Swim explained that this is exactly what they didn't want because they had gotten help from a Japanese development studio and their aim was to make something new and special that worked within the parameters of the show. And the studio was already making levels based on earlier episodes. With that affirmation in tow, the game and idea intrigued Gendy Tarkovsky enough that he came aboard along with absolutely everybody else involved with Samurai Jack, from writers to even the small-time voice actors who played one-off characters they don't even remember playing. And for them to all be back together working on this one last project, to them all was an amazing time and a swan song to the 20 years that Samurai Jack has been around. And according to the official Twitter page, this game's story is officially canon. Wow. Let me make this clear right now. At the end of the day, this game, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, is specifically made for Samurai Jack fans. If you grew up watching the show and stuck around it to its end, this is the game for you. 
When it comes to the Samurai Jack experience, it gives you nothing more and nothing less. As a game on its own, it's only about 5 to 10 hours long, and obviously it's not going to win any Game of the Year competitions. I also did run into a small glitch here and there during one of the boss fights. Beyond that, this game's purpose was to give fans a true Samurai Jack experience. A handful of levels inspired by the best of Jack's adventures littered with the characters that made the biggest impressions on its followers. What you have here is a game that was made by people who were clearly passionate about the show and didn't want to just make some garbage shovelware. Can I recommend this game to an outsider? Well, yes. As a game, it's perfectly fun and a fun hack and slasher with plenty of gameplay options to give you a fun time. If anything, I'd say it's a good introductory game into the genre. By design, this game is expecting the player to already be well-versed into the lore of the show, including its final season. The game on its own makes absolutely no effort to explain the history of the show or how it all began, beyond showing you just the introduction that we all know and love. Again, from the moment you start the game, it opens in the middle of the final battle. That alone should clue you in on what their agenda was with this game. New players who have no experience or history with the series are obviously going to miss out on a lot of the fan service moments and big reveals. And sadly, that's just the way it is. Holy fuck, are you going to have a difficult time getting your hands on a physical copy? This game apparently had a limited run and also a collector's edition that came with a lot of good stuff. But Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous! Look, I'll just say it right now. If you can find the game for a reasonable price at all, pick it up. You won't be sorry. If you are a Samurai Jack fan, and you missed your shot to grab this game at launch, well, start saving, because I don't see this game dropping in price anytime soon. Whew, there you guys have it. Those are my thoughts on Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. And a pretty damn amazing conclusion, all things considered. I mean, what a way to give the fans everything they wanted. Not only did we get the conclusion that we asked for and the climactic finale that we wanted, but we also got to live it in a sense. I mean, what other developer does that? What other... What what people do this? Apparently Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Gennady Tartakovsky people. That's who. Anyway, guys, what did you think of Samurai Jet Battle Through Time if you played it? Or did this review persuade you guys to check it out yourself? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinions on what you thought about Samurai Jack. And, yeah, I'll see you down there. But before you go, be sure to share our video. Be sure to like our video. And that's one of several ways you can help support this channel and help it grow and become bigger and better. And, well, it helps to pay the bills. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm William Morse from The Better Gaming, and we will see you next time on the next video. Whatever it is, I don't know. I just kind of make it up as I go. See ya.